Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isretel here for Renaissance Periodization Nutrition Myths video number three, gain taining for best results in long-term muscle growth. Let's get into the claims, reasons it's wrong, grains of truth to why it's not entirely wrong and where people are coming from on it, and then to best practices of how to actually run your nutrition long-term to get the most muscle gain that you can. So the claim of gain taining is this, you just eat in a healthy muscle building way, clean, so to speak, and you don't actively try to gain weight. Okay, not all the gain taining, there's multiple gain taining philosophies. Not all of them say that you're just supposed to try to hit maintenance. Most of them, at least on average, say that don't try to force feed yourself, just eat well, eat plenty of protein, eat enough, and just eat well and train hard, and then tons of muscle growth will result over the long term. Now, reasons why it's wrong. When you're much over 10% fat or 18% or so as a female, a lot of times you can gain muscle and lose fat at the same time very, very productively. Once you are quite lean, hormonally, nutrient partitioning wise, your body just no longer trades off muscle for fat like that. If you're really lean, your fat doesn't want to get burned off, for lack of a better anthropomorphizing term. And it's really tough to grow muscle in a very lean environment be unless you're providing extra calories from somewhere. So it's a really tough thing that just doesn't really happen anymore. And think about this way, if someone can be 15% body fat, and gain muscle and lose fat until they're 10, okay, I can buy that. How many people start at 8% body fat and gain muscle to get to 5%? There's a, they have to trade off of one or another. You have to, as you gain muscle, you have to lose fat because you literally just have to weigh the same if you're truly maintaining, right? Now, sometimes your internal hunger cues and activity levels will let uh, gain taining actually occur. So some people, when they train really hard, they get hungry and their activity levels are, are uh, not excessive. They think they're maintaining, but they're actually at a slight surplus much of the time. So they're not trying to force feed themselves, which is a, a positive thing that this approach brings, but they end up eating a little bit more on average over time and then they do get bigger. So they was 150 pounds when they started, they never focused on trying to get big, but they're lifting weights that boost their hunger, they eat a little bit more, and over time they're 155, 160, 165, 170, and the entire time people ask them like, hey, so you've been trying to do muscle gain phases, you're trying to stuff yourself? Like, nope, never stuff myself, just ate normally, right? And they'll say, well, that's gain taining, right? Sort of, actually there is a caloric surplus there. Some people just naturally get it when they lift weights and develop the hunger for food that for many people comes from lifting weights and doing it hard. That does happen sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't happen. And especially as you get more advanced and as you get bigger and bigger physically and put on more muscle, your hunger doesn't just boost up to where it's supposed to be. If you want to get 160 pounds jacked and you weigh 130 pounds, uh, five pounds right now, you weigh 135, um, it's likely that at some point you'll have to purposefully gain weight the slow and steady, but at times uncomfortable way, because your body will no longer want to get much past 145 or 155, especially if you're not a big eater, or that you don't get that crazy appetite boost from hard training. So at the end of the day, a lot of us who want to get much bigger than we are, Gain taining will get us some of the way there, but not all the way. At the end of the day, getting much bigger is throwing off your body's normal balance of homeostasis. To throw off homeostasis a lot of times takes willpower. Your body doesn't want to get that big anymore. It's going to have to take a plan. It's not just going to happen automatically. Now, there are grains of truth to gain taining. What are they? You can, in many cases, get good gains this way in especially a number of conditions. If you're a beginner, awesome. Intermediate, sometimes. If you're not super lean, this is definitely a really good way to go. If you train very hard, that's a good requisite ingredient. The harder you train, the more likely you are to make gains, even if you're not trying to eat on purpose a psychotic amount. If your diet is very good, very locked in, incredibly nutritious, you give yourself better chance to gain when not purposefully trying to exceed calories. And the really big one 
is that your hunger is such that you actually do gain slowly without trying. Like some people are just kind of meant to be big. And when they lift weights, it's super hungry. I had a friend, uh, half a friend, he's still my friend, when he was going through his muscle gain phases, after a workout, like in the middle of a weight training workout, he would become violently hungry. And for hours after a workout, he'd be super hungry. And in days he didn't train, he would be way less hungry. So for him, just training five days a week, he ate so much food, he barely had to stuff himself and he gained pounds and pounds and pounds. The thing is, we'll save this for a little bit later, but that does not happen to everyone. So it's not a guarantee. But if that happens to you, yeah, gain taining is absolutely a really good way to go. And here's the thing. These gains come with very low psychological stress. You just have a ton of enjoyment in eating, training, having fun and growing. You don't have to count stuff. You just eat well and train hard and the shit happens automatically. That's really, really good. And if it's happening, that's awesome. Now, if you want optimum, Nothing beats intentional forays into even higher body weights that are going to have to come with some force feeding. Not force feeding, but eating a little bit outside of your comfort zone to willfully put weights on the scale, food scale that reflect themselves in the bathroom scale to actually go up in weight to gain as much muscle as possible. So best practices, what is the way for? If gain taining is working for you, if you're actually gaining muscle over time, clearly rep strength is going up, your physique is changing visually like you like, and especially if you're gaining some weight over time, keep doing it. There's no reason to complicate things and stress out when you actually have a thing that works. But if you're pretty lean especially, and if you haven't gained weight in a long time, and your rep strength is sort of going up a little bit, but not a ton, and it seems that you don't just automatically float up to a higher body weight. Like if you're one of these people that weighs 175 pounds and like for a week you eat a bit more just cause like friends are around, you eat some more junk food or you've just been hungry that week, training a lot. And then at the end of that week, you weigh like 177 and you're like, all right. And then the weekend comes and you eat normally still very healthy. You're not under eating. And then the next week comes and you weigh 174. You're just, your body's just not inching up like that. And those of you who have had to try to gain weight on purpose, I know you've been there where you're like, hey, ate a lot of food for a week. And next week I'm lighter. Look what the hell is going on. And sometimes this shit just doesn't happen anymore. Your body becomes a little bit resistant to wanting to gain weight and has to be mm -mm, coaxed a little bit on an actual purposeful path outside of where you might want to, right? So if that's the case, it's probably time to consider setting a moderate weight gain goal, external weight, weighing yourself on the scale and eating to get there and you eat whatever it takes, bro, like you eat at a surplus, which you may not find comfortable from time to time. And that occurs whether or not you are hungry. Like last week, you didn't gain weight. This week, you have to eat more calories. By Thursday, you're like, I don't want to eat this food. Well, if you go back to eating the normal amount of food, uh, logic would say that you probably just repeat last week and you don't gain, but you're trying to gain. You have to gain because you have to gain this muscle. You set out to do it. You don't have to. It's your choice. But once you've made that choice, you have to do a really good job. Something like 5% of body weight gain over three to six months is a really good conservative goal. Hold that for a few months after, you get to eat a little less food, take a break, then maybe diet off the fat over the course of four to eight weeks that you've gained, you're back to the same leanness, up maybe five, maybe more pounds in muscle, and then you repeat that process if you so choose to continue to get more muscular. That phasic approach is what works the best and almost every single super jacked person you'll ever see got there by leaving their comfort zone. Almost no elite bodybuilders, powerlifters, strong men got to their level of muscularity by just being like, oh, I just ate well and ate protein and it just happened. No way. Almost everyone who's the most jacked they could be had times, not all the time, but times where for weeks on end, months on end sometimes, they had to eat a bit more food than they were comfortable with. It doesn't mean you're shoving cookies and whole milk down your throat, the go mad, rough bullshit. That is a way to get fat and muscular. You can do better. You can eat mostly healthy foods. You can have a bit of junk, but just raise your calories a little bit so that you're for sure gaining on the scale. That's the best way to progress and probably the only way to unlock your full hugeness potential. Go unlock that potential, folks. See you next time for the next Myths video.